Hi, this is Emma, and welcome to Esoteric Detective. Welcome to Mandela Mailbag number 4. And I have some really great Mandela effects for you today that people have sent me, as well as tracked down myself. One that even shows now Moses from the Bible had horns, just like the devil depicted in art and literature. Which might, very well, blow your mind. But first just a bit of housekeeping. An update on Ed's short story, The Great Ship. Which now, at the time of this video, is number 15 on Amazon, under science fiction. Ed would just like to thank everyone that bought the short story and those that left a review. Since it helps a lot. Thanks for supporting his short story. Anyway, now to the mailbag. And today, we have some really good ones. But first, let's go back to what people are calling an outrageous Mandela effect. That is, Moses from the Bible, who brought down the Ten Commandments, is now depicted in history with horns. You might think I am joking. But I'm not. And to those with the Mandela effect, this is shocking. Since they never have heard of Moses having horns in history ever, let alone being depicted with horns in famous medieval art. I originally found this, on well-known Christian Bible Mandela researcher, Kat's YouTube channel. A link to their channel will be in the description. Anyway, now it would seem that Moses has horns. At least is depicted with such. And it would seem that he has always had horns. Even in famous statues depicted by famous Christian artists like Michelangelo. As seen here. Called the Horned Moses. Now ask yourself, what other famous character from the Bible has horns? And would it make sense for any artist to depict Moses so? Well, it would seem. As history now says, it is just normal for Moses to have horns and be depicted as such by Christianity. It is also worth noting, that this famous statue sits outside a church in San Pietro, in Rome. Of all the places. Well, let's just look at some other examples of horned Moses from history. Just for context. Here is a fresco of God giving the Ten Commandments, to Moses in. St. Andrew's Church. A painting now often cited as one of the medieval period's most finest paintings. Where is Moses you might ask? Well, he is to the right, with the giant goat-like horns on his head. Well, you might ask? Why would those in the medieval ages put giant horns on Moses? In a time where even drawing something with horns, was blasphemous. An interesting question that those with the Mandela effect are asking, since they never remember Moses depicted like this. Ever. Here is another picture of Moses in a cathedral in Lithuania. Holding the Ten Commandments. Also with horns on his head. And here is a statue made in the late 13th century, of Moses, which now sits in the museum in Dijon. And for those with the Mandela effect, this is not what Moses is supposed to look like. For those with the Mandela effect, he would have never been depicted with goat horns on his head. And here is yet another depiction of Moses with horns, from an old 13th century manuscript. It depicts Moses coming down the mountain, with large horns on his head. To those with the Mandela effect, history has now changed. Maybe only in a slight way, but it has changed. What do you guys think? Do you always remember Moses with horns? Or do you remember it different? Let us all know. For the meantime, let's move on. In other news, a gentleman named, Blair Reich, who holds a PhD, and is an independent investigator, sent me a link via Facebook, to a scientific paper they done on the Mandela effect, via Facebook. Blair Ike done a great one and a half hour video explaining what the paper is about, and provides theories as to what could be happening, such as the simulation hypothesis, and a number of ideas. At the moment he is collecting more information in the form of online quizzes, which he is asking people to take, 
so he can gather more data about what is happening, and hopefully find some kind of answers. A link to Blair X quizzes and videos will be placed in the bottom of the description, under source, as always. But in the meantime, let's have a look at his conclusion to his paper, and let him explain it in his own words. Popular, so at some of these time periods, people are looking for it. And this, you know, this is sort of like a really popular search. None of these are all that popular, but then suddenly Mandela Effect is actually getting up there. Berenstein Bears is sort of getting up there. You know, this this kid's book is now uh, almost as popular as one of the most massively produced television shows in TV history. Um, and Mandela Effect is now sort of as popular as people searching for sex in the city, which is not as popular as people searching for sex and the city. But um, it's just showing me that what, what I'm really taking away from this is that not a lot of people cared back in 2012. But some maybe a couple uh, like nobody cared prior to 2012 sometime around November or possibly December of 2012 people started caring. So maybe that Mayan calendar ending was actually like we all merged to a new universe who would have expected that. And then sometime in like July of 2015 you see a spike and as it goes into July of 2016 now it's sort of gotten caught in a hole then people are actually looking at this and, and searching for this. So, I, you know, it, it seems like there's some data that's out there that suggests this. Uh, again, I talk about in the paper, look at this little, the spike, that doesn't make any sense to me. Um, but now people are actually looking. They're not looking for, no, I am your father, but they are looking for this line, Luke, I am your father, after that bump. And you don't see that bump in any of these. So something, this is another piece of evidence to me that something happened in July 2015. And as that time period goes on, you can sort of see that there's this, this, uh, slope here uh, more and more people are looking for this yeah they were looking for this because maybe some of these people are just erroneously typing in the wrong thing or that everybody thinks it's Luke I am your father so they're searching but these people that are coming after it these are the people that are looking for Luke I am your father um, not because the movie came out but because they're like what the hell when did this line change and it's and it's just now really starting to take hold and actually all of that is is again evidence that this is like a new phenomena that we have not spent you know the last 40 years with all this uh, Mandela effect stuff going on but most people have not experienced the Mandela effect from what I can see in the Google Trends data until like July 2015 it seems like yes there were some at that like November December 2012 and then there's a handful like 5% of the people that might have experienced this well before that but the vast majority of people that are now getting a, the, their head wrapped around what the hell is this Mandela effect thing, it didn't happen until July of uh, 2015. And then finally, I, I start getting into a question of what is this effect? What is it showing you? What does it mean? Um, and I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know how we got here. Um, you know, the, the one thing that stands out is that we're on a different part of the galaxy. So maybe that gives us some evidence. But uh, so was it time travel? Was it CERN? Was it a D wave? This is a quantum computer. Uh, are we jumping around dimensions? Are there merging timelines? Are we in some kind of virtual reality thing like a holodeck or the matrix? Um, is this the end times? Are we experiencing reincarnation? Uh, there's a spirituality book that a lot of people references. Uh, it's called Law of One series. And in the Law of One series, they talk about uh, harvesting souls at the end of the Mayan calendar. Uh, maybe the people here are the ones that had their soul harvested. Um, I don't know. Maybe there's two ors or three ors. I like this. The main thing to me is that this world is infinitely more complicated than what we thought it was. Uh, I don't actually know what the answer is, but I know that the answer is not like, oh, well, my memory just failed me. It's something else is taking effect here. And that's what that's what some of those controls are showing me. Uh, and, and actually, there's this idea that we've ascended kind of like this harvesting, but without the harvest, we're just we're going from a 3D experience to a 4D or 5D or higher. Um, and then there's multiple things. So I, I don't know what the answer is of why. I'm very well convinced that it's not just a memory thing. And that as we look into, um, when you start getting into more total effects, like I can understand why somebody would say it's just memory on Mandela effects. But when you start getting into total effects, when you're like skull is different, when your heart is different, when the geography is different, when uh, how many people are in the car with JFK is different, when you have just total like all the products in the store are different like when you just realize how many things around you and you when you put them all adjacent to each other 
like it's way less common that people say oh it's just memory now everybody's like oh crap something's going on here uh i don't know what like again when i start polling people they don't have clear answers of what is going on but they recognize something's going on uh, and so that's that's where I can leave you. I mean, this is we're at the very beginning of of looking at this. This is not even there's no like I can't even find a journal to go publish something like this in. And you know, it's not like Vice is going to go run an 83 page story. So um, so I'm counting on you guys to sort of share this. And I'm I'm hoping if I have one ask, you you guys have watched an hour and 35 minutes of this. Thank you. If I have one ask, it goes back to the beginning. Please send people to these quizzes. I want more data. I want to I want to make sure if I get up to like 50,000 or 100,000 people on this quiz, I'm going to feel even better that I'm not just getting like small pockets of people, but that, that it's really representative of everybody, not just maybe not even just Americans, but people all over the world. Um, there's a second quiz. This one's pretty quick. And that third one now has all, all, not all, but the vast majority of the Mandela effects, the vast majority of the, uh, the Toto effects. And so if I have one ask, it's please go take some of these quizzes. Um, maybe you'll screw off my results because you'll, you'll put some of these funky ones in now that you've heard about some of them. But um, I'm still very interested in having you share some of your own individual, individual recollections about these and just um, share it like share it like somebody that doesn't know the answers already, just what you experienced beforehand. And that would be pretty good for me. So uh, this has been very long, but hopefully it's been informative and hopefully uh, it was faster to go do this at an hour and a half than it was to go read 83 pages. So I know it was long, but there's a lot there. Uh, and, and I'd also encourage you to go back to the testimonials and some of the links that are in here, go watch them. It, they're all pretty cool. Uh, this is the best I can do right now. And I, there's not, I'm not part of a university. I'm not part of a team. I'm just one dude kind of checking this stuff out and looking at other YouTubers and seeing what's out there. Uh, please spread this. Please share those quizzes. And uh, let's see if we can't figure out what, what's actually causing this and how we got here. Thanks, guys. Bye. What do you guys think? Check out the quiz and paper if you want. Links, as I said, will be under source at the bottom of the description. Anyway. Now for an interesting blog post I found. It has a bunch of Mandela Effect pictures on it. Some really good catches. A link to which will be in the description as always, under source. This picture is from an episode of American Dad. As you can see in the background, it is none other, than Jiffy Peanut Butter. Just like people with the Mandela Effect remember it. However, of course, in this timeline, as history says it now, Jiffy Peanut Butter never existed. It has always been just Jiff. Without the why. Which begs the question, if someone is animating something, would it not be normal to Google the spelling before you place it in a TV animated show? Since you can't change it afterwards. Or was this how it used to be, and now it has just changed? In other catches, on the blog, they caught a Disney book from the movie Snow White. You can see the words mirror mirror, on the wall. But of course, that is how people with the Mandela effect remember it. Since now it is magic mirror on the wall. At least in the movie Snow White by Disney. Also, here are a few old news articles, with the name of the famous vampire movie, just how people with the Mandela effect remember it. That is, Interview with the Vampire. Not, Interview with. The Vampire. The blog has a great summary of pictures. And check it out if you want to see more. But for now, that is it for the mailbag guys. And I am sorry I have not got to everyone's messages they have sent me on Facebook yet. I have so many Mandela effects to cover, it is really hard keeping up with them. But I will get to them sooner or later. Anyway. What do you guys think? Do you think something is really happening? Or is this all false memories? And if so, could so many people have the same false memories? Does that even make sense? You decide for yourself. But, whatever the case, stay tuned and subscribe to Esoteric Detective, to keep up to date with the strange and unusual. And please give a thumbs up, if you liked the video. And do let me know what you think in the comments section. Until next time, 
Goodbye.